<laughs> hey, what's going on everyone? It's me, Mr. Mario, and today I'm going to be bringing you a tutorial similar to what I did before with installing a mod chip in an original PlayStation, except this one will be adapted for the PS1 Slim or the PS1 or the PlayStation Slim, whatever you want to call it. The reason why I'm doing that is because it is quite a bit more condensed. Do you see the PS1 is only the SCPH10X model? I'll be using a 101 model, and there's two different motherboard revisions as opposed to the mini with the original. There is the PM41A motherboard, which we will be soldering to today, and there is the PM412A motherboard, both of which are going to have diagrams in the video and down below in the description for download if you need more detailed photos of them to look at with your own pace. Now getting right in the tutorial here, I'm going to have a list on screen of the parts I used for this, and we're specifically going to be preparing the mod chip for our first step. Now the mod chip is going to be a pick chip like you see right here. You can either burn it yourself using a tutorial that I have created showing you the parts you'll need and how to burn the chip, or you can buy one pre-burned with the MM3 hex on there. I would recommend going to Eurasia and getting it from there. It's $4 for the chip and about $5 shipping or so. And and then you can get your chip ready to go right here. What I recommend doing is first off taking the pins and kind of bending them out flat and then cleaning them, fluxing them with Kingbow Flux and then tinning each one with a little bit of solder. After that, we're just going to cut up some wires and cut them either to length if you want to or you can kind of just eyeball it, whatever you want to do. But then we're going to have some Kynar wire or 30 gauge wire and just solder them to each pin. Now, once you have all the wires cut up and soldered onto the chip, what I normally like to do is I like to pick it up and kind of lightly tug at the wires. And if they all stay on there, you should be ready to continue. Now, it looks like I missed two pins, but I actually didn't. For the PS1, it saves you a little bit of work because not only, in my opinion, it's an easier system to work with, but you do not utilize pins two or four. You're only going to utilize the other six. So there's going to be two pins that will intentionally not be utilized, and that is to be expected. So once we verify that our wiring is good to go, what I would recommend now doing is take some isopropyl alcohol and clean up the residue and the chip itself with all the connections right there. Once that's cleaned, we can go ahead and move on to the console. At this point though, it would be beneficial to identify what model you have. So I'm going to have some diagrams on screen right here. This tutorial is specifically using a PM41A motherboard. However, you might have a PM412A motherboard, which will you Will need to identify. Both of them are pretty easy to install to in my opinion, however they do have different wiring points so just make sure you take note of that. Now at this point with your mod prepared you want to move over to your system and make sure you have it identified. At this point here what I like to do is I like to take a q-tip with isopropyl alcohol and clean up all the points that I'm going to be soldering to. That way you ensure that you have a nice clean connection. After cleaning I also take another q-tip and dab it up with some Kingbow Flux and then hit each individual point that I'll be soldering to. Again, this will make soldering easier and give you a better connection when working with all these little components. So just go ahead and hit the points that you need to. Finally, at this point, you should be ready for the wire installation. So what you need to do is again, have your diagram available and be looking to see which points will need to go to what wire. So every pin is going to have a certain number to it. It will be one, three, five, six, seven, and eight, and you're going to find those points on your motherboard and solder them to each respective point. It shouldn't be too hard on here, but just make sure you go slow and be careful when you're working on this. What I'm going to do here is show you all the install itself. I'm speeding up the footage a little bit just for time, but you all can see firsthand how the install goes.
Now, if you've done everything correctly at this point, congratulations, your chip is now installed. Now we just need to go ahead and clean up our mess, get it insulated, and put everything back together. What I do right here is I take the metal shielding for the system and kind of just gently put it on top of the motherboard right here. The reason why I do that is because I want to make sure that the chip will be able to sit comfortably in the system once we put it all back together. Once you can verify you have a proper spot for it, we can go ahead and work on the other portions, which should be easy enough. Once you have your chip fitted and situated, what I do is then cut off a little bit of electrical tape and wrap it around the chip like so to insulate it and keep it safe. The reason why I wait until the end to do this is because I want to make sure I have all the points cleaned up, I want to make sure the chip is clean, and everything is sticking to it. And now at this point, you should be ready to continue. So now you can go ahead, put your system together, test it out, and make sure it is playing your burned games or imported games properly. And if you're at this point, congratulations, you have now successfully modded your PS1. Now, just a little bit of a forewarning here and kind of some advice on here for troubleshooting. The M3 has a little bit of an issue where occasionally when you turn on the system, it might not play a game. So it's probably not going to have a 100% success rate. The point is on there, if you turn off your system, turn it back on and it boots up the game, you should be good to go. But at that point, if your disc is not spinning, if it's spinning too fast, spinning too slow, reading it as nothing but a auto audio CD, if it's doing anything else like that, you need to check your wiring, you need to make sure everything is hooked up properly, and you need to make sure that all the points are lined up with the proper wires to the proper pins on the chip, because you could have messed up your wiring at one point. Anyways, this is Mr. Mario signing off. Thank you all for watching, everyone. If you enjoyed this video, a like would very much be appreciated. If you absolutely hated it, a dislike is fine as well, too.